welcome old and new and everything in between. Those of you who have not uh, experienced a detailing series before, uh, I'm going to share with you the process from start to finish on my uh, 2000 uh, EM1 Civic Si. Uh, for those of you who've been around a long time, forgive me. I'm going to go back to the basics here and start from the beginning, uh, share with you the entire process of how to decontaminate a car. Uh, I know that many of you have been around for a number of years, have seen this over and over and over again. Uh, but I'm going to take a little bit more time here today to explain the process and the product uh, and, uh, and, and in hopes that you know, I can um, convert some of you uh, who are new to the channel uh, or are just discovering this process. Uh, hopefully I can convert you into maybe caring a little bit better for your car. Uh, so I'll, I'll be showing throughout this process of polishing and correcting. Uh, this car that I have is a 27,000 mile, you know, 20 year old Civic. Uh, it's been uh, well, well cared for almost to the point of too cared for. Uh, it's been rubbed on a lot. You know, see this a lot with a lot of you uh, that maybe aren't experienced detailers in that uh, you, uh, you want your car clean and you want it always clean and so you touch it too much. Uh, and so I'm going to be uh, posing a philosophy of mine that I've developed over the years of uh, maybe touching it a little less. Uh, and that means sometimes the car is going to be a little dirtier at times. Uh, but what you don't want to do is wipe the car all the time. You know, the real common thing I see is that you, uh, you want the car clean, so you wash it. And then you wipe it with all kinds of stuff, all kinds of towels and everything. Uh, and then uh, it sits in the garage maybe a couple of days and it gets a little dust and you wipe it again with some detail spray. And then you drive it to the office, drive it home, wipe it again. Because you have cars and coffee in the morning, you wake up in the morning, a little more dust, you wipe it some more, drive the cars and coffee, you wipe it again, you bring it home, you wipe it again, and you can see it repeat, repeat, repeat. Uh, we want to skip all those wipings and really, unless you're going to do a wash, a full wash, a waterless wash, or a rinseless wash, we don't want to touch it. And so this process here today is going to be to fix all of that rubbing all of that over touching, all of that over wiping and over cleaning. Uh, and so the byproduct is, the, you know, the innocent byproduct is that we end up with all kinds of scratches, swirls. Seems very clear there was a water blade, uh, like a squeegee and probably some chamois used on this car. Uh, and I don't think that's a fault to the previous owners. They just didn't know any better. And so I'm gonna teach you a better way to do it. Uh, and those of you who have been around a long time, maybe we'll, maybe I'll say something different that, uh, or say it in a different way that you hadn't heard before. So here's what we're gonna do to start. Um, I already washed the car a couple of days ago, but I've driven in a couple of days. And so it really needs to be washed again. Uh, plus I wanna strip off the stuff that I put on it. Uh, I had done some Gion wet coat and some bead maker. I wasn't planning on paint correcting it this quickly, but I didn't realize how bad the paint was until I got some lights on it. Uh, and so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use some decontamination soap. I'll talk a little bit more about this as we you know, start using the product, uh, but this should uh, pull off most of the, the bead maker and the wet coat, uh, at least put a dent in it. Uh, but we're going to wash with this. Uh, we're going to use a foam cannon pressure washer. And, uh, and we're going to get the, you know, the car uh, prepped or decon soaped wash, which is a little bit more aggressive soap than a traditional pH neutral like Atom soap that I use. After that, I've got some, uh, I should have brought, I forgot to bring the gallon over here, uh, but I have some Optimum Ferrex. This is an iron remover. Uh, again, we'll talk more about iron removers and how you should choose and what I'd suggest uh, with this with this thing. This is a press-all bottle. Um, I've got a whole nother batch of uh, press-all bottles coming here in a few days uh, that's finally, I think, acceptable to start doing some real hardcore testing, uh, but these bottles are, are pretty fantastic. This is a 500 ml version. After the iron removal, then we're going to do a auto scrubbing. Uh, auto scrubbing is a more modern version of a clay bar, uh, and that's going to remove surface contaminants. Again, we'll get into the detail of that as well. So I'm going to get everything prepped, ready to go here, uh, and then I'm going to talk you through all the different processes and all the different things and steps and the, the how and why of this, of this process of decontamination in preparation for polish, likely tomorrow. I'm going to put about 150 milliliters of soap in my bottle here. Then I'm going to take and put soap on my mitt. 
I'll explain why in a minute. Okay. We've got a quick disconnect with a cap. So let's go fill up our rinse bucket. Okay, so let's prep, prep, prep our bucket. I have lots of videos on this setup here, uh, but I have a bucket filler with an ultimate hose nozzle. Again, the concept here is that uh, I provide almost all these solutions at obsessgarage.com. This was never my intention to, to, to create this business, but it's happened out of, uh, uh, happened out of me uh, sharing these videos and people asking questions. So now we provide these solutions to people who want them. And so this here is a quick disconnect on the new PF22.2 foam cannon. I have a cap that'll allow me to shake it up, uh, but I'm gonna go and fill this up using my rinse bucket. This is not any kind of special treated water. This is just water out of the tap. I don't have any deionization or water softening system. We've got pretty decent uh, water here out of the, the Florida aquifer, out of the well. Uh, so I, don't, I haven't found any need to do any water filtration out here. Uh, but I would like to build a reverse osmosis system out here someday. At least a uh, softener and breaker, iron breaker. So I'm gonna fill this up about, about three quarters of the way. Put my cap on and I'm going to shake up my liquid. What you don't want to do with a foam cannon in general is you don't want to put your know, thick heavy soap and then have it sit on the bottom. You need to shake it up. Of course one way to do this could be you have some sort of measuring device and uh, fill it up with water and then add soap. I find it easier uh, to get the proper soap measurement uh, and then add water, but you could do it in reverse either way works But the key is to make sure your soap is relatively mixed because if you didn't you'd suck all the soap off and you'd only have um, Maybe a few uh, a few minutes or a few seconds of, uh, of Foam and then you'd find that uh, then you, that you'd run out. I always wait to uh, to fill up the wash bucket uh, because I want to rinse the car off. I want to get the car foamed, let that sit on the surface, uh, and then I'll come over and prepare this because I don't want all my all my suds disappearing. So I take my cap, set it aside, foam cannon, put it in place here, snap it in. Okay, so let's uh, let's rinse the car, but we've got our uh, foam cannon ready to go. Okay, I have an extremely stout, uh, very expensive. 20 millimeter electric. It's a 23 amp uh, pressure washer. It's called a Krenz like K165 STS. Not very practical for most of you, uh, especially uh, us younger guys that are, you know, JDM fans. Uh, my us younger guys, I mean you younger guys, I'm an older guy. Um, the, the best thing to do, go to obsessgarage.com, go to For Obsessed. Uh, I'll put it in the cards up here. Uh, and uh, check out, I have a, a spreadsheet, the pressure washing spreadsheet that breaks down what, uh, what pressure washer I think you should buy. I literally bought 90, maybe 85% of every electric pressure washer in existence uh, here in the US uh, from cheapest to most expensive and have broken down what my suggestions would be. My suggestion would be Karcher on the low end, Karcher K1700. Medium end would be Comet or AR630. And then on the high end, some variant of a Krenzla. Uh, so the way that I have it set up, I have a boom pole. Uh, normally you would have a hose, uh, but you could do this, this wand and gun setup. Uh, this is a, uh, a gun and wand that I've been working on for a number of years, trying to perfect it, where I don't have a lot of bulk here. Uh, so these are all stainless Mosmatic fittings made of T304 stainless steel. You can buy this and put this on any pressure washer. I've got a 20 degree uh, wand with a detachable uh, 40 degree um, um, nozzle that I can move from short gun to long gun. We're not gonna deal with the wheels here today in this process. Normally you would wanna clean your wheels. I just cleaned them two days ago. Uh, so I'm also gonna take the wheels off and do a full restoration and coating of the wheels, uh, the factory wheels. So I'm not gonna mess with that now. These are actually the original tile tires from 2000. Uh, so I'm not going to mess with that here today. We're just going to deal with the paint. Uh, but you, you also may need to do uh, your engine bay in this process. I'm not going to do that again because the engine bay is really, really clean on this car. But my normal process would be on a dirty car. Engine bay, then wheels. Actually, wheels, then engine bay. Those two things don't need to be done on this. Uh, and then the three-step decontamination process. Let's just start with a rinse. 
Little tip, always start with your pressure washer gun away from the car, make sure everything, nothing pops off, no O-ring fails, and then we can go to rinsing. Again, this car has a layer of uh, wet coat and bead maker, so there's gonna be some beading on it, but we're gonna try to strip that off here. So the reason to use a pressure washer, again, I told you I was gonna go back to the basics here. The reason I'm using a pressure washer is I use a lot less water, I get a lot more effective cleaning than using a garden hose. So, and even on a 20 year old car like this, we shouldn't have any issues with seals. If you're washing a 1966 uh, GTO or something like that, uh, you may want to uh, go with rinseless or a garden hose or a little softer version, but I've got this dumbed down to 1,000 PSI and then as much flow as I can get. So I'm getting about three gallons a minute on this big pressure washer. 40 degree, a 40 degree nozzle should give you plenty of pressure but not cause any potential damage, even if you slipped up and got too close to the paint. Again, the car is not dirty. I just, we've driven it a couple of times after I washed it on, uh, what, two days ago. But I do want to give it a good quick rinse to get all the dust and dirt off of it. And this is more about getting it decontaminated. Okay. So now let's foam it. So I have my gun set up so that I've got a quarter inch and quarter inch. Uh, I still haven't swapped this out for a Mosmatic, but they, they work together. So I have my setup like this. Inside of this foam cannon, there's a hole, an orifice. You need to make sure that orifice is appropriate for the output of your pressure washer. In this pressure washer, I'm pushing the limits. I've got a 1.25 millimeter orifice, it probably should do a 1.5. I've been using it for what, three and a half years now, so I haven't had an issue, but you'll hear you know, the machine works quite a bit harder. Most electric pressure washers, you know, $500 and less, are gonna need a 1.1 millimeter orifice, meaning the hole is smaller. Uh, and so make sure to go check out that series of different videos and go to, just go to the pressure washing section of the website. And my recommendation would be Karcher if you can do something on the lower end. <laughs> So this decontamination soap really does foam well. So I'm looking, this is actually a little bit on the uh, foamy side of what I'm looking for. Um, you want it to stick to the surface, but I want to get good even coverage. You want sort of a happy medium between shaving cream and a little bit runnier is my preference on foam. So right there, that's, that's sort of a perfect foam if you if you're asking me what it should look like. All right, so there's a little bit left in the bottle. I'm gonna dump that into our wash bucket. This is what's so great about having a quick disconnect. I pop it off, I dump it out, and I rinse out my, my foam cannon. Take here, add a little bit more water. These quick disconnects are really expensive, so they're, uh, what was it, a hundred and something dollars, 125 bucks for the set. And we've just gotten another batch of 50. I'm not sure if they've sold out yet, but they've been hard to get. We've been making them by, by small batches. This here, the new bottle stands up nicely. Let's get the rest of our fill bucket here. And you'll notice the Decon Soap does a great job foaming up. So the reason why I put it on the sponge is so I don't end up shooting it out of the bucket. I learned this from uh, Adam, Adam Patali from Adam's Polishes many, many years ago. It's a, uh, I just think a better way to kind of prep your, your bucket. This stuff has a very slick feel. When I did my pH testing, it only P tested out at uh, like eight, what was it, eight and a, eight and a half uh, pH. I swear it's more basic than that because it does strip the surface. So this isn't a soap that we use all the time. This is a soap that you would use for this application where I wanna strip the surface if I can and prepare it for full decontamination. So this would be step one. So you can see our foam is kind of running off and dissipating. Uh, really foam serves the main purpose for me is to lubricate and then help me remember what I've already washed. The foam in and of itself is not the main driver in getting the surface clean. Now remember, I told you in the beginning of the video, we want to touch the car less, you know, the, as little as we can. And so what I'm attempting to do here, I'm still going to have to touch the surface. There's no such thing as a touchless wash. 
So don't let anybody tell you that, that you can. It just doesn't exist. It doesn't work. And even if it did work, it still wouldn't be as functional, wouldn't work as well as this process of actually physically touching the surface. And so what I want to do in this process is I want to, you know, I want to lubricate it. Hence, this soap is extremely slick and should, it's not going to, it's not going to strip off a coating, but it should put, put a dent in whatever wax or sealant you have. Uh, the three-step process, you know, an iron remover isn't going to remove any kind of wax or sealant, but the three-step process should remove most of it. Whatever's left, if there was any, um, you should be removing and polishing. A coating's a different story. This could be a good soap as a stripper to kind of get, uh, get contaminants or try to at least chemically decontaminate in between you know, coating applications you know, that are years apart, but uh, it's still not gonna, it's certainly not gonna put a dent in, uh, in, a, in a ceramic based or silicon dioxide based coating or any kind of coating for that matter, any chemically made up. Not a lot of surface contamination. Uh, I can feel a little bit here and there. Uh, it was very clear that the car had been, looked like kind of rotary po polished or buffed buffed if you will. Uh, we could see some some marks from that, what, what appeared to be rotary, um, not pigtails, but you know, just moving polish around and not really, with not really much of a purpose. So I'll be showing you in follow-up video in the next steps of the series how, how this paint is going to be improved. I'll also be talking a lot, a lot during the polishing process, I think, because it's a little more appropriate. I'll have more time to talk to you uh, about what I'm thinking about this car, and I'd like your input on certain things. Doesn't mean I'm going to listen, or let me rephrase that. Doesn't mean I'm going to do what you say, uh, but I will listen to, uh, to suggestions. So this soap that we're using, this would be an Obsessed Garage branded product. It's blended by a company called Proje for me in uh, Southern California, in uh, Orange County. And uh, where this product came from, uh, this was a tunnel wash product. It was designed for like a, I guess, like a stripping type soap, you know, for a car wash where, you know, it's just going through the, you know, on the conveyor. And uh, it really does a good job of kind of stripping and preparing the surface. Not something you'd want to use on every wash, but it's a really good soap for this process. This was actually a, an old chemical guy's formula that they had sourced from who knows where, from the original blender. And uh, they abandoned this, which I believe to be their best product. They abandoned it. I actually bought it from them for a few, about a year. And then they said they weren't interested in producing it anymore. And so I had to go out and find how to make it. And so that's why it's a, an Obsessed Garage branded product. My thesis is that I could come out with my own line of products, but it wouldn't be nearly as good as sourcing products from manufacturers all over the world. You know, a real common, you know, you know, buy all your products from Adams or buy all your products from Chemical Guys or Griot's Garage or Meguiar's. I prefer to buy from everybody and come up with a system that uh, takes the best in class from all over the world instead of just choosing one brand. So because we'll be doing significant detailing or details, are touching this car in each square inch of it. I'm, uh, I'm not micromanaging this process a whole heck of a lot. Like I'm not dealing with like wheels and this wheel wells and all of that. We'll be doing that independently. And so if you just wanted to address the paint, this is a good way to do it to kind of limit your time, especially if it's your only car. Because this process will take, my guess is, probably 20 hours worth of detailing if I don't deal with the wheels and tires during this application. This is probably one of the top 10 
EM1 Civics on the planet. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna take it, try to make it top five. We'll see. All right, so let's rinse. And then we're gonna remove the iron. So this is very different than any of the chemical guys. You know, their remover or de um, decon type soap. Same thing with Adams. Uh, what is a chemical guys called clean slate? It's not very good. This is the best product I've found on the market. Otherwise I'd buy that product instead. We're gonna rinse this two more times so I don't have to be too worried about getting every square inch of it. Okay, because I don't know the state of this car and the condition, the amount of uh, iron on it, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab the leaf blower. I'm not gonna dry dry the car, but I wanna blow the car off, get the surface a little bit drier so I don't dilute the iron remover as much. Uh, you've very rarely ever seen me do this before, those who've been around a long time. Um, but if your car has never been iron removed, I don't know if this ever has, uh, then you probably wanna blow the surface off, get it a little bit drier. That way you get a more concentrated um, application of, uh, of iron remover. So let's do that real quick. Lee. I'm a big fan of electric leaf blowers, specifically the Ego. Uh, this is the 650 version uh, with uh, my friend uh, David Beaver from Apex Air has uh, created this prototype. This is uh, or probably prototype number three. Uh, maybe two or three, something like that. Uh, this was 3D printed, uh, but we're working on the possibility, well, he's working on the possibility of bringing this to market through Obsessed Garage. Uh, I prefer the 580 version. It's a little less shrill. Um, this one, you definitely need ear protection for, or else you're gonna have a, you know, you're gonna, you're gonna possibly damage your ears. But notice how pliable and movable this is. Another thing you could do if you, you know, if you're maybe have some carpal tunnel or something like that, is maybe stick with the Ego 530 and stick with a two amp hour battery. Uh, I guess it's a two and a half amp hour battery. Keep the weight down and just you use a couple of batteries on the car. But this, I could probably do two full size cars, maybe three with a single five amp hour battery, even using turbo mode the whole time. So I'm just gonna blow this off a little bit here. Oh, another tip. Uh, I didn't dump out my soap buckets yet. Uh, because I'll be dunking my auto scrub back in them. So they're still sitting here on the side. All right, so let's get our iron remover. Okay, this is uh, this is from Optimum Ferex. I know it's not branded. I had some in the bottle, but I didn't, um, I, I'd forgotten to bring a gallon to show you what it looks like. We have it in the store, so you can buy it if you need it. Uh, but nothing, nothing too earth shattering about this process. Just get our bottle primed here. It's a brand new head. Let's hope it works. All right, so this is, uh, I've had many iterations of bottles and I don't know which one that this that one was. Let's try this again. There we go. Nothing special about this. We just want to get it applied to the whole surface. I like to do this process at night. Uh, that way the car can dry overnight. And so back in the day before this was my job, and I had to go to work on Monday morning. I would do this process Friday night. And then, so do the decon Friday, wake up early Saturday, do my polishing all day Saturday, try to get my first layer of protection on the car on by Saturday night so it could cure overnight. And then Sunday, do my wrap up process. So that's my general recommendation. And you're gonna use about, this is why buying this in gallons makes sense. If you have a car or two, you know, you'll go through a gallon you know, every couple of years of iron remover. I know a lot of people like to use iron removers for cleaning wheels. I just don't think it's a good product for that. I only use it for this. I also don't recommend choosing the, like the snow foams that have iron remover or something like Car Pro Tricks that has Iron X or Iron Remover and Tar Remover. Just use the Iron Remover. Stay concentrated with a product that's designed to do this specific process only. And don't try to do too much at once. Stick with the best product for the job. At least that's my recommendation. 
Carp Carpro's good. Optimum's good. Geon's good. You know, this is just sodium diglycolate, so there isn't much to it. So yeah, so this was full, and uh, I have this much left, so I used probably 350, 300 milliliters of, of, of stuff. Then I'm gonna take a couple of gloves. Let's, you could have put the gloves on beforehand, probably would've been smart. I'm gonna take some gloves, I'm gonna dunk them in my soap bucket here, and I'm gonna go around and massage the surface, just to make sure it, I learned this from my friend Billy at Presidential, he rubs it in. Again, we're gonna polish the surface, plus it should be clean anyway, so there shouldn't be a bunch of dirt on the surface. But I wanna get this spread out evenly. By the time I get back around to where I started, it'll be time to rinse it off. You don't wanna do this in the sunlight. I don't know what would happen, but I wouldn't suggest you, you find out. Glass is good too. Put it on your glass to get that cleaned up. As much garage time as this car has likely spent the last 20 years, I suspect we're not gonna see a lot of iron on the surface. In fact, I'm not seeing any, although it'll turn purple and be kinda hard to see. I just did the, the Gen 1 Raptor, so this is gonna feel like a cakewalk comparison. And my poor M3, needs this badly, it's time. I was gonna do the M3 and I'm like, nah, I think you guys wanna see the Civic. I wanna see the Civic. So we'll do the M3 next. Not a lick of iron on this rye. All right, let's rinse it. You wanted to give a good, good rinse this time. So most of the time on a well-maintained car, Especially a car that's been rubbed on a lot and garaged a lot. You're not going to find a lot of iron. Now we're ready for auto scrub. And not a lot of surface contamination, hardly any. So this is more of a precautionary thing. The whole point of doing this next step, which would be to, to abrade the surface with something that um, uh, I need to use a lube, some lubrication to make sure that I'm not scratching it terribly. Uh, but what I want to do is I want it to grab and lift any dirt that's embedded, any surface contaminants. So that previous step of the iron removal is to get any little embedded iron particles. Last thing you want is that dislodging, sticking to your clay bar or your auto scrub and scratching the surface. Plus, a lot of times those will embed a little bit more. Um, they'll bond a little bit. Those surface contaminants, iron will bond a little bit more um, strongly, so it's a little more difficult to get off. Uh, with, a, with a clay bar. A lot of times it's too small or too deep and you can't get it out. So the clay bar step, you could have done it. Again, you can skip a lot of these steps. I like to do it this way. This is the process that I've been using for, for a number of years uh, and have continued to hone it over time. But I don't like to do it when I'm washing. Again, I'm not in this for the, for the money, for the business of it. So I'm not uh, trying, my time is not being billed out here. Uh, but you could certainly clay it with, uh, just spurt, foam it down again and do some soap. The key is you want to make sure the surface is clean before you're claying. You don't want the claying to be your washing. You want to wash it first because you don't want to be moving a bunch of surface dirt uh, and scratching the crap out of the paint. You're already going to mar the surface by doing this. So I want to limit the marring possibility uh, by one, using a lube. So I'm going to use NanoSkin Glide diluted 7 to 1. Uh, and then secondly, um, you know, I want to do it on a clean surface. So let's, uh, let's knock this part out pretty, real quickly. So I've got my soap bucket left over here from our wash that I have. I'll throw my, my nano skin in here. Always start on the windows. Uh, now these are older, these pads have been using for a while, but I always want to start on the glass and break the pad in. Uh, and then I'll do the, the paint. And so it's just a good habit. So. I've sort of just developed this habit from, you know, from since, from, uh, since the beginning of NanoSkin, whenever I started using this, five or six years ago. Maybe it's not that long. But I do all the glass first. Again, this is diluted seven to one, but you don't have to be super exact. You know, just get it close. 
we'll uh, do some experimenting on the M3. I'm likely going to be repainting the M3 once this car has come and gone. If you guys buy a bunch of stuff in the giveaway on this, and I make a lot of money on this car, like I think I probably will, you know, net of all the money I'm going to spend on it, then I might do a stroker, dine in stroker, repainted M3, E92 M3. Not that, the, not that it really needs repainted, but you know, it's got some, some areas that really need to be addressed in that it's already been the front and rear of the car where I have some paint work done to them already. I used to micromanage this process and really, you know, before I knew about polishing, you know, the clay bar was the polishing to me. But if you've never done this before, you'll notice that as you run your hand across, you know, when, when you, before you did this, it was a gosh darn gravel pit and it becomes silky, silky smooth. Man, somebody find me a spoon carbon fiber hood. There was like a, we cocked a spoon and uh, it's like a really, really long wait. Just not practical for me to get in time. I don't know how long I'll have this car, but I don't intend it to be a year. I've got to get this redone. It doesn't match. The only rock chip on the whole car is right here. And there's one dent in the rear quarter. I'm gonna get pulled. And we're off to the races and getting this thing to be the most legit. Electron blue around. Oh yeah, not much contamination, if any because I think they probably ran a, a rotary across this thing a couple of times. As many dealers that will, people that don't know Jack, will run some old 3M polish on a rotary and just jack up the paint. I think that they're cleaning it up and they'll just go <laughs> over it real fast. We're not gonna be doing that. So that's the, Big, big handheld, and I got the little sponge, which you could get away with just using this on the whole darn car. I'm gonna use this on the rear. So I still don't have a paint depth gauge, but I, I think we'll be safe. I don't think I'll, I'll be, I'll be careful not to blow through, but who knows, you never know. You can be as careful as you want, and you still might blow through it. The clear, what I'm talking about is polishing and polishing through the clear coat, but I think, I think we're gonna be okay. So this is the decon process. It's kind of annoying to dry it after this because there's no more wax or sealant on the car. If you have a coating on your car and you're interested in removing it, go watch my recent Raptor video where we removed c corks and had been IR cured onto the surface and lasted about three years generally pretty easy. The first iteration of coatings were not so easy to remove. The new ones will come off with a simple compounding, a heavier polish. So you'll notice this process doesn't take a whole heck of a lot longer than washing the car, especially if your car is maintained. This is an argument for why keeping it maintained makes a lot of sense. It makes future care easier but after your initial decon your next year follow-up decon if you maintain the car for that six month period or nine month or 12 month period it shouldn't be as much work to keep it maintained I'll tell you what that wet coat that wet coat that i put on a couple days ago i shouldn't have put it on i wasn't planning on doing this as soon it's sure holding up and that's okay Remember the polishing, we wanna get off what we can. We wanna get the surface contamination off. It's buttery smooth. Um, it's okay if there's still a little bit of protectant left over, we'll, but we'll polish the rest of it off. Some of it is also, we don't have any more contamination on the surface. And if your paint is relatively smooth and in good condition, 
then um, you'll still have water, decent water behavior on it. You know, not as much as you might like, but um, you know, if your surface is decontaminated, you shouldn't have water parking itself on the surface. So notice I'm still rolling with the same battery on uh, the second batch of drying. I just dried for like five straight minutes on turbo mode. So don't get too excited. Uh, what do you guys think? Should we do some sort of obsessed garage version of a Kickstarter for these to help uh, Dave raise some capital in order to get these done? Uh, just the blow mold alone, uh, I mean, if he does it in aluminum, is like you know, 50, 60,000 bucks. Uh, plus the development costs he's had up to this point. Uh, this does fit a 530, 580, and 630. And uh, I'm getting closer, uh, hopefully uh, through Shervon. Shervon is the manufacturer of these. Uh, I can be able to start selling these soon. Okay, so the drying part is rather simple. I don't want to spray any kind of stuff. I don't want any drying aids. We don't want to add anything to the surface. We just spent all that time trying to take it off. So don't use your detail spray, your bead maker, or whatever other product. Don't use that now. And this, I like to use combo of large waffle weave drying towel for this step and a twist loop bead maker towel I call it for this process and I just freaking love bug it's May so they're starting all you old people that have been around here a long time don't get too excited don't get too angry you know the Civic is all the same principles I've got a GT4 coming, so you don't have to get too bent out of shape about me pandering. This was my first car. If you haven't watched the series of why I bought this thing, I'm not going to love it. At least I don't think so. Uh, the purpose of this car is to enjoy it, do the part that I like to do the most, which is the buying and modifying of things, and then move it on to the next person through a pretty, what I hope to be, a pretty epic giveaway. And by giveaway, I mean sell lots of stuff. So don't get too bent out of shape. If you don't like Hondas, first of all, I don't know what's wrong with you. This is where I started. And I think it's important to remember where you came from. Oh yeah, power locks. How about that? A single power window or automatic window. This thing needs some loving. Need some proper loving, not the uh, kind of loving it's gotten in the last however many years. It needs a real, real polishing and correction to correct that this one was loved a bit too much. So if I can convert just one of you Civic people or car people, if you dreamt of having one of these cars or had one like I did, Hope that can convert you to doing some proper techniques. At least adapting some of these ideas that I'm talking about here. Because chances are you're not doing it correctly. You're causing more harm than good by rubbing on it too much. Normally I wouldn't use a white towel to clean the jams, but look. There's very little dirt in these uh, areas of the car. Use the hood prop. I haven't used the hood prop in a long time. I haven't had a car with a hood prop. But look, the B18, I'm sorry, B66, B16A looking pretty clean under here, people. Makes me not want to change it, but my adolescent dream, late adolescent dream was a B18 Type R motor. So that's what we're going to do. And then I think I pretty much decided I'm gonna keep the, B66, the B16 attached to the car, meaning I'm not gonna sell the B16. We're gonna pull it out unmolested. I have the factory header for it. About the only part we don't have is the factory exhaust, which I don't think anybody would really want anyway. But I'm sure gonna get lots of heat for uh, molesting this 27,000 mile really clean, but very swirled out Civic. All right, so that's a wrap. Uh, EM1 Civic, 
decontamination. Remember, step one is to wash it with some decontamination soap. I'd suggest using mine. Uh, it's, I think, the best product, and I've tried a lot of them, uh, if not all of them. Uh, so, uh, Obsessed Garage Decon Soap, then followed with, uh, with Iron X, Fair X, or something like that, which I have in the store, or some iteration of that, followed with a auto scrub, or you could clay bar. Uh, stay tuned. I'll be doing a full clay bar testing series on the uh, on the M3, which has a lot more surface contamination than this does. Uh, the M3 is due for a, a correction, and then uh, and then a drying. And again, you don't want to use a drying aid. So that's the process. Episode two is going to be correction. We're going to get out the lights. We're going to really show you how how uh, swirled out and scratched and abraded the surface is. And we're hopefully going to correct that all out and bring this thing back to like better than new condition. So that's the plan. Thanks for watching. If you're new here, please subscribe. Is that the first time I've ever said that in history? Scratch that. Pretend like I didn't ask that. Just come here and watch the videos and buy stuff from me and help me keep to do this, keep doing this stuff. So anyway, thanks for watching. As always, stay tuned for more crazy. Yeah, one Civic.